All right, guys. Today is a super exciting day. Know why? Know why? Because we're putting walls up, baby. So this is going to be the first video for our DIY part four awesome treehouse. So there's been so much building up to this, literally, building up to this moment. And uh, I'm excited for what's coming next. So to start, I the first obstacle I have is getting all this material up there. For the bigger stuff, I'm just able to lean it up there and then pull it up by hand like I did with the floor joists. Um, when it comes to the 4x8 OSB, I did think ahead and make that opening large enough to physically bring a sheet up, sheet by sheet. But honestly, after like four sheets, I'm like, nope, this, there's got to be another way because I'm not doing that. So then I came to this bad boy. So I got uh, four 2x4x20s, leaned it up there, and I made a sled. So let's, let's look at this bad boy. Here we are for this ramp slash sled. I leaned it up against here. I put an eye bolt through the cage at the bottom right there. I put OSB down there and I made a track for it right here. You can see. So when I pull up on this rope, which I put a knot in it every uh, foot just so it's easier. So now, oh gosh, when I pull up on it, it comes up pretty easy. But I say easy lightly because, in fact, it is not very easy at all. So after, like, bringing some of those walls up and everything, and these are really little, I was like, man, there's got to be a better way. So I came up with this. And here we have it. <laughs> and I definitely over-engineered this thing, but I didn't want to take any chances. So I built this frame out of some scrap 2 or 6x6s uh, six that I had. I got the winch from Harbor Freight, just the cheapest, smallest one they had. It was like 60 bucks, 2,000 pounds. I'm not going to be pulling anything that heavy up here. Got a couple pulleys from when I put my floor joists up. And now here we have it. I've already been testing it. I'm running off a 12 volt battery in there. And then, it's as simple as this, buddy. We're in business. All right, let's build some walls. Okay, after several adjustments, I've got it working. And I've got a little helper. All right, keep it coming, keep it coming. Keep it coming, keep it coming. A little bit more. There you go, bud. Awesome, thank you. All right, when we get up there, he's bringing it up. We'll, uh, I'll show you a couple adjustments I did, but it doesn't really matter. This sucker, what bit the biggest thing was, I did have my tie down down here and I needed to move it up there. So that was one because the cable was over top of what I was pulling up and that was no good. So then when I moved it up, I needed to add reinforcements there behind and then I needed to adjust the track. <sighs> and then I needed to put those little braces there because the cable was getting too close to the frame of the treehouse. So just little alterations, but we're going much better than we would be doing this all by hand. All right, you know what you're doing? All right, hit the button, bud. Give it a try. You got it. That's good. Good job. And now it, it hangs right there on that screw, bud. There you go. Hang it right there. There you go. Hey, stay away from that edge, bud. All right. See, even a kid can do it. Okay. 
started looking over videos and realized I need to take more videos of this thing because the uh, last thing you guys saw was that winch I put up there. But, you know, I, I get distracted easily, see? I'm working on this arbor right now. <laughs> anyway, back to this treehouse video part four. So I got several of the walls up. Uh, a couple of obstacles I've overcome so far is going to be uh, the walls as far as the height. Uh, I ended up just going with single size walls. What I mean for that is I was going to do like eight foot walls and then put an eight foot wall on top of that. But then realize that's way too tall and it is not the best structurally as far as like it could fold in on itself at the middle where the two walls meet. So talking to some people doing some research, I went with uh, two by four by tens. So here you can see it and I'm loving it. I've had to adjust the roof, uh, actually while I'm right here. So when I did the 10 footers, you can see right there, that corner right there, actually went into contact with that tree, that limb right there. So I had to, my solution for that was I just lowered it two feet and now I'm gonna angle it out. So right there, it's gonna, it's gonna come down here at an angle. And that actually works out better than my original design because where that door is right there going into it, I wanted to have some coverage there or just like a little awning there just so the doormat and just the main entrance to the treehouse just doesn't get super dirty. So you can stand there, wipe your feet off if it's raining or something, just something like that. Lift is still working really good. Back wall, uh, that is part of the back wall. So big, big news is that's where that big bay window right there is gonna go so very excited to do that i hope i have all my dimensions right um so there's that bad news we had a super bad weather storm the other day and i leaned up all these windows on one side uh, of the railings and wouldn't you know i didn't put a ratchet strap down because i thought they were heavy enough and boom so casualty um, that one, that one broke. So I'm just very thankful that only one broke. Good news is, <clears throat> I think I could get it repaired if I wanted to, but the good news is, I don't think I need it. And here's why, just in the original designs that I've got, I've had to, uh, I didn't take into account how large those windows are. They don't look big, but they actually are. They're three by five. And so like when you factor in the framing and just all that that goes, that you have to have for those windows like that structurally, I, I didn't have enough room where I wanted to put them. So I was gonna put one right here and I couldn't fit it. I was gonna put one of these up in front of each of the oaks on the inside and I couldn't fit it. So I've got like, two extra windows but I found a place for I have three extra windows and I have a found a place for two of them so I have one extra and that one was gonna go here and so you know there I don't need it so all right enough talking down here let's get up there okay here we have it so this is the main entrance to the treehouse I've got my door in super pleased with that uh, I got the win this door and windows and stuff at auction. Got this door handle at auction. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So that's going good. Um, there's where I had to make the modifications for the roof. So now those, I'm gonna have just uh, some an awning come off of there, probably about two feet or so, to give me some shelter over my door. Here is this side. This is where. That was actually the first wall right there that I put up. So that was a big uh, motivational time for us. So currently it's exciting to like be at this point in the build because right out here where this like patio porch is right here, like this is, this is what the end result's gonna look like. So it's kind of cool just to have it set up and know that my dimensions are actually working out because I got the patio set there and the little fire pit. And then right here with this branch, I want to put like some type of swing just to maximize my space up here. <clears throat> At this point in the design for this treehouse, it's it's fluid. Like in it's almost constantly changing as I get into the actual uh, application and implication of, of all this project. So 
the biggest development was right here I was gonna do a sliding glass door I was gonna do like a six by six and then uh, I have great friends who just love to throw wrenches and not wrenches but more or less wrenches into my projects and uh, just give me some better good ideas so the most uh, <laughs> what, what I got is someone said well why don't you do like a bifolding door like a garage door but you know a door so I was looking at those I was looking at small garage doors and right now I'm leaning towards getting a 6x6 bifolding glass door installed so what that's gonna look like it's gonna be right here in two panels and then it's gonna fold out like like this like that and then up so I need to make sure that my clearance in front of that and the railing is good because it's gonna be tight and then when it gets up it'll provide an awning here so I'm gonna have an awning in front of here just like maybe a foot or so just to you know keep things away from the treehouse and then here so then that way you can just completely open up the treehouse and we can put like a mesh screen down here that's magnetic so you can come and go without having to you know slide a door or anything like that so right now that's what I'm trying to make happen I, I really hope it works. My concern is that this is too close. Um, I got like two feet to work with here. So I may have to have a custom door made or something because I'm pretty committed to this outcome. But we will see, I will keep you posted. Here's the inside of it. And it's looking really good. I've, I've come so far right now. It's, it's halfway done at this point. So you can see just as I'm going, I'm uh, framing the windows and everything specific just as tight as I can so I, I'm not a carpenter I don't really know what I'm doing so you know don't judge me too hard it's DIY not expert so right here my next plan of action is gonna be this long wall right here um, I'm gonna do that whole section in one go when I have the time so right now I'm trying to figure out what I need to frame up that door whatever it's gonna be so because I have to factor in the other small bay window that's going to go in there so the I'm going to have a an opening similar to that that's going to be like right here so you're going to be able to see completely through the treehouse which is going to be super cool so I'm going to have a large either bifolding door or a sliding glass door if that's what I got to do that's what I got to do I'm going to have some windows there and there actually those ones right there those elongated ones I'm going to have those staggered so one will be here and then the other one will be right there and then above that up here I'm going to have one of those up there and then here I'm going to have my uh, smaller bay window and it's uh, right here is going to be separated by a loft this is where my loft is going to be but for right now I'm just going to pause right here because this next video you should be able to see a little more clearly what actually I'm talking about okay it is April 22nd and this is what I got done I've got pretty much all the walls done this is gonna be my last one before I can start on the roof I am not gonna do this little section of wall here because I want to use my lift as long as I can it's going really well it has saved my back a lot of pain and me some time everything has gone really well um, this is the front wall I got that large bay window in that was a challenge but hey I didn't drop it there we go I put the supports in the back I did that after I got the window in there so I left it square like that set the bay window in there um, set it in place got it square and then finished the top so now the next step well I also I got these windows in pretty much all the windows are in now too um, I only have one more window to put in and it's a frame in. it's gonna go right here it's gonna be a 3 by 5 just like this one right here and it's gonna go right here and I'm only doing that because I have an extra window so and like I said I got that at auction so I'm just trying to to use it or shoot I might sell it. I don't know anyway I still got to put that large one in there's my door just trying to give you a quick 360 it's coming together really well and I say that because I have yet to fall out of this treehouse so it's it's still going really well all right <clears throat> next uh, next thing I'm gonna be doing is putting my roof on so I'm gonna be using 2 by 12 by however length of construction framing lumber it is gonna I'm gonna set it there on the ledge and I'm gonna run it that way 
and then elevate it from here two feet so then that'll give me a good runoff to this side of the treehouse and then I'm gonna collect the rainwater here and then that's gonna be the source of water for this little build so I've decided I'm gonna put a metal roof on it as well just uh, that's the most durable so that's what we got so let's see what it looks like from the outside and here we have it right here from the ground view that's the front wall and then the side it's really coming together we're actually you know at this point able to see how big this thing is actually going to be and I'm going to admit I, I definitely didn't know it was going to be this big <laughs> just looking at the, the drawings and as I designed it but hey I was just trying to maximize the space that I had and I believe I did that so here we got from the back side and I'm also in a crunch too to get the roof on because I need to get the supplies out of my garage because we're gonna have a tornado shelter installed in there uh, May 13th and I just want to give them as much room as I can so I'm gonna try and make a video over that one too but So far so good. So now like I said, next thing I'm gonna do is start on the roof, get at least half of it roofed, put my supplies in there from the garage, and then uh, probably work on button it up from the outside working in. All right, let's get to work. All right, so I'm not sure when the last time I recorded my progress, but I've done a lot. So I knew it was time to get on it. So I've got all the walls up except for a back wall and I'm leaving that back wall off until I'm done getting my winch and I can uh, dis disassemble my winch. So I'm very close to that. Tomorrow I'm trying to get the roofing all on here. I've got it almost all framed and it's really coming together pretty good. It's just a lot more work than I thought. <laughs> so I'm using 2x12s for the majority of it. Oh gosh, watch the stump. But uh, using 2x12s <clears throat> across the rafters. Side note now I know why I haven't recorded in a while. That little guy. Yeah, that little guy. In this garden. But anyway what we got so far so coming around the other side I've got all the windows up in there I ended up breaking two so that was fine because I used the extra ones that I had so I didn't have to you know go without a window in a location that I really wanted but there's the wall I need to put up when I'm done using my lift and then this is supplies for tomorrow, so that's going to go on the roof. So, let's get up there and have a look. Okay. So, so far, I got this loft in. I know I haven't recorded since I put the loft in. What I was waiting on for that was that big beam right there. It's 6 by 12 and it was 12 feet long. I cut it down to about 10 and some change, I think. I cut that little bit off. So I had to wait for this massive beam to come in before I could do the loft, and that was kind of holding everything up. But I got that in like last week, and then it's just full send since then. So I've got the loft up. <clears throat> I am super excited to put the garage door in once I get, you know, to that point. But I'm holding off to do that until I finish the roof so as far as the lofts concerned I didn't have any problems I used uh, two by sixes here which is just out of precaution for the garage door because as the garage door comes up I wanted to make absolutely sure that I had clearance and didn't have to 
you know, get up there with a jigsaw or something and cut some wavy lines in my rafters. So I use two by sixes there, and then I use two by eights everywhere else, and it is sturdy. My two by sixes are spaced out every 10 inches. I know it's overkill. If you've been following me for a while, you know that's what I'm good at. So I got all that pretty much. This here, I ran those two there um, knowing that eventually, once I'm done and can, you know, take more time on it, I'm going to cut those out and then open all that up because right here is going to be my stairs and the stairs I'm going to they're going to go up like that and so I'm, I need some more overhead clearance. I was hoping that I would be able to get it up there and I could if I just wanted to do a straight up, you know, ladder, but we have a upright refrigerator and really the only place to put it that makes sense is right here. So, I'm going to do that, create an awesome nook for it. And then it'll be neat because the doors will open in this little 45 degree angle and it'll be like I meant to do that. <laughs> but you know I didn't. But anyway, we're going to roll with it. <sighs> Got all these windows in here. I put two identical windows right here by each of the trees because, you know, on game night and everything, I kind of just want to like sit here and have the wind blow through the area and really just try and create an open uh, space, you know, for an indoor location. So this is going to be the bathroom still, no issues, no problems there. I did decide that rather than enclose that, I'm going to leave that open area just open. And then I'll use that to like put, I don't know, scenery, maybe a little waterfall or something, or, you know, at least maybe do something seasonal, like, you know, a Christmas tree or whatever. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then that way I'll be able to just completely enclose that. And then I'll just, you know, me as the adult, I'll just get over it and go do what I got to do over there and probably not mess with putting a gate in, <laughs> be safer, you know, with the kids. So I got the big bay window in and super excited for that. And I got the other bay window in, so I don't think you can see it. No, nope. but let's get up there because I want to get up there. Okay. So this is the loft. Ugh. So all of this, I'm going to cut that out and that'll be more open, more realistic. I made the loft right on level with the windows, at least this one. So as you're sitting there, you can really just feel like you're about to fall over the edge. Right here, I want to say we're about 26 feet in the air from this loft. And then up top on the roof, we're about 36 to 42. So that's where we're at. And then up here, what I did is I raised this portion of the roof two feet. And the reasoning was is this is how I'm going to collect the rainwater and then just shed water and everything. So over there, I just left it level on the walls and then I just slowly raised it and I used a oh what's it called bottle jack <laughs> I was just picking it up after I framed the rafters and I had my little son Liam sliding in those little blocks but daddy's back was about to break so I'm like you know what let's just do the bottle jack because that's much easier so got that going and I was able to anchor everything, so now I'm not too worried about it blowing off. But tomorrow, hopefully I'll get the roof on and we won't have to worry about it anymore. So as far as anchoring it, I'm just putting these 2x4s on both sides of the rafters. And then I'm running this 2x4 down here. And then I'm running like a 8 inch bolt lag from the 2x4 into this and then lagging that down to the wall. And then I'm running OSB there. And then when I'm all done, I think I'm going to run OSB, or I mean a 2x4 here, but I don't know, we'll see how bored I get. Then over here, this is so far the open area. This is the last bit of the rafters I need to complete. Um, as for the front portion of the treehouse, I have it extended, the roof extended four feet overhanging the walls and on this back section I'm gonna have it overhanging two feet the reason being is I want to just kind of give a little bit of protection for my wraparound deck that I have and that that's why so what up little man You've got to close the windows be safe because somebody almost fell out of the windows didn't you 
I asked him to bend over and pick up a tool for me and he was like going along the wall and then he got here to where the open window was and he like bent down to pick up I don't know whatever it was I asked him to get and he about fell out that window so lessons learned you know so let me get up there bub um, you can go to the top of the stairs because we're safe all right so here whoo doggy this is the top <clears throat> okay so here I have the front and once I get the rafters all tied in I just slowly move it out and then uh, get it to overhang and then on the front I'll show you what I did no higher little man so this is the overhanging by the four or six feet and I just tied it in with that rafter there on the side so all in all it's going really well hopefully next time you see this we'll have a complete roof okay for this garage door what I ended up doing is just giving it a good bath with a hose I cleaned it all off <clears throat> and then washed it with soapy water clean it again and then let it dry I'm going to be just taping um, the front and back portion of each panel so this is the very bottom panel I have three other panels that have glass panels in them so I'll be using cardboard to tape over to protect over the glass and then taping those edges so that I don't get any paint on the glass which wouldn't be a big deal if I did I just use a razor blade and get it off once all this is all painted and dried then I'm going to tint the windows with a one-way mirror film so let's get to it and here we have it I have the first coat on and I am super impressed I use rust-oleum semi-gloss protective enamel and this is my first experience with the selector nozzles and I am very pleased with it I use they have a diagram here on which ones they are number wise and I use number four the vertical fan I was able to easily just direct the spray paint and I have no drips and I'm just some DIY guy in my garage and up to this point I have never been able to say that so it feels pretty good to say I have no drips spray painting with a can so pretty pleased with it now I'm gonna set this one to the side let it dry uh, not rushed in the Sun I've had bad experiences setting stuff to dry in the Sun that tends to make it bubble sometimes so I'll just set it over here in the shade whatever and then we'll get the other panel and we'll start taping it up so here's our glass panels I have three of these there's some writing on the side I don't want to lose so I'm taping that and now I'm going to lay out some cardboard a little short probably stop about an inch or so from the frame so then I can get my painters tape right up to the frame and then I'm gonna spray paint the frame of these panels alright got the cardboard down tape the edges I used a little squeegee to go around just the inside track uh, around the window just to get a tight fit and uh, now I'm just gonna apply this I'll try and do this one-handed while holding this camera for you, but I just want you to see how easily this goes on. So I'm just going to continue and, I mean, shoot, I don't think it could even any easier than that. And it's done. So that went just as smooth as the first panel. Now I'm going to set this to dry and do the other two and then we're going to get these tinted. Alright guys, so I messed up. I did not score the aluminum rail railings, the metal framework before I painted this and I thought I could get away with it. I was using Rust-Oleum which is for metal. So here's what I found out. Uh, not everywhere but in some places. It bubbled up like that and so you can clearly see like that's not gonna last now the rest right here let's see that that it that adhered that bonded to the to that spot and for the majority it, it did bond but in a select few areas this this happened and that's not gonna work 
So what I did is <clears throat> I'm using a scraper and then I went out and got some just bonding primer. So I'm scraping it and then I'm sanding it and I'm cleaning it up and then I'm coming back and hitting it with this bonding. So it's already, it's like kind of cracking a little bit. So I, I don't know, I don't know guys. I guess this is why it's called a DIY video. You live and you learn. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm just gonna keep trudging along and we'll see how this turns out. Okay, big day for the treehouse build. I am getting the ice barrier down, which makes this roof officially waterproof. So I'm using this M300 uh, tar sheet that has an adhesive on <clears throat> the top portion of it right there. You just peel that off, put that down there. I'm using a torch, just a little hand torch to heat it up and then I'm laying it down and just applying pressure just uh, to help it stick. So I believe, I'm no roofer, but I believe that with the heating and cooling of this roof, it'll help the tar paper just naturally adhere to one another. So this is what we got so far. I'm super excited about it. I just wanted to show this little section because I'm putting these roofing nails in with the little plastic caps every foot just along each little strip just to help tie it down. So, and then overhang in about five inches. The instructions said three, but I'm covering those roofing nails too. So once I get this done, I'm going to put drip edge on the front of it just because I don't know when I'm gonna get to actually installing the metal roof. So I just want this to be as secure and durable to the weather as it can be for now. And drip edge is cheap. So I'm, I'm not gonna be doing that to the side, just the very front, you know, in case the wind and water wanna try and um, go in from the front there. So. That's some of the view from the, the soffit and flashing on the side. Can't really see the soffit, but looks pretty good. I also took this time, it is October. I took this time to do some trimming in these oaks. So I trimmed, I spoke with that arborist and he said that you can trim live oaks beginning in October. So I trimmed just a couple branches and then I spray painted that wound open area that I inflicted on the trees with black paint just to deter bugs from noticing it. The trees are looking good, roof is looking good. Let's finish this sucker. It is October 22nd and I'm wrapping up part four here. I have made the decision to call this little video clip because I have enough material and I'm just dying to get it out to you going through all the video clippings that i put together you have seen the entire house build for this part four of the diy series for our awesome tree house <clears throat> i'm just going to summarize real quick what we have done so far and then in conclusion i'm going to tell you what you have to look forward to in our next and hopefully uh, final series in this long drawn out project this is the front face of the treehouse. It is the about east facing side. The treehouse, this side faces east. You can see here, I ended up not doing the bifolding door, but we put the garage door in. You saw me build that. I had a guy install that for me. He did an awesome job, and I'll show you more in depth when we get up there. You can see the overhang, how it went in, all the windows on this side. I love this time of year. This is the south side. I've only got about those two windows right there. That one which faces that oak and then that one. You can see the roof section where I have the soffit and fascia, everything coming together. I still don't have the front facing portion done, but for this part of the build, I just wanna show you how I sealed up the house and what I have so far. The thought is that part five of this video series is going to be like the finishing touches and, and whatnot, and then I'll probably do a part six and just uh, maybe a drone fly over and quick view. But this is, let me see, the west side. So I've already got some of this siding on here, and I am loving this siding. 
uh, early in this video series or this part four I talked about putting a window here and then possibly there and as you can see I just scrubbed that idea what happened is I ended up breaking another window panel so in the spare window that I had I took it out and just repaired the one window because I've got enough windows in there but you can see it's really coming together very well I'm super pleased with the look going with the black trim with the spice siding I'm getting that at Menards and I'll show you that closer once I get up there but it has some insulation properties to it which I'm super pleased to I'm trying to just maximize the space and the efficiency of this since I want to put heating and air in it so I'm just making every little step I can to make it as efficient as possible earlier in this video I talked about how I had to alter that front wall and hopefully now you can see what I was talking about with adding this little awning structure here I'm very pleased with how that turned out that gives me a lot of uh, extra protections and uh, cover there over my door now this is the north facing wall from the ground I'm trying to get that sun out of the view gosh come on there so here's the front And I think that's all you can see from down here, so let's get up there. Here we have it. So you can see how I altered that little corner to accommodate for the tree. And I'm hoping it was enough so I don't have to maintenance it in the future and alter it if the tree house and tree come into contact. But I cut that little corner out right here on that side and then just angled it accordingly and look how much it comes out it comes out i'd say about four feet over top of the door so that's going to really help just shed water and snow in the in the future so hopefully not gonna have so much tracked in i'm very pleased with that and then on the back side well i'm using this scaffolding right now and i'm super pleased with it i got this scaffolding at harbor freight i bought these stabilizers from Menards those were super expensive I'm not happy with those but at least it's good quality so all in all I have this scaffolding system forever now so that's how I'm gonna be doing everything on the inside but <clears throat> on this outside let me just get up here so here's what I got I'm using this catwalk to walk across here, which is very sketchy, very scary. That's okay. <clears throat> so I'm coming across here, like such. Yes, it moves. Yes, this is scary. <sighs> okay. So I'm coming up here and I'm applying my siding. I got my J channel, everything just like a house. Also, while I'm here, I'm going to wash these windows because it probably won't be up this high on this side again. <laughs> but this is how the siding's getting put up there, and it's going very well. No issues here. And then this is what I was trying to get to. I want to show you the top here. So this is how this is looking. Actually, I'm here. Might as well just get up. Okay. So that's how I transitioned to this little awning. Very pleased with it. So initially I had that, and then I ran this section out when I tried to cover up this part of the treehouse. So officially, this house is waterproof. How awesome is that? I put the drip edge on it here in the front. This is not the finished product. So I still have to install a metal roof that I have acquired. And I'm, I don't know when I'm gonna do that. I'm hoping to do it before winter sets in, but I got other things to do too. So we'll see, we'll see what we get to. So this is the roof, completely waterproof. Love it. Backside. 
Okay. All right. Now I'm going to get down and show you the inside. We are down safely. So we're going to come over to the front. I'm pleased with that overhead at the top with the roof. I'm very pleased with that. It gives me a little protection on the front. It doesn't seem like it's enough if it's really raining to prevent water and stuff from getting in the windows and stuff in the side or at least to find mist but at least it'll protect the windows and give you some shade and um, you know block the sun and everything with the windows a little bit here we have the garage door very pleased with that I ended up putting a one-way mirror film on the front of it to help give people some privacy because I would you know I want people to come over and stay so while they're up here in a treehouse that has a hundred windows in it I want them to at least have a sense of privacy so I did the mirror film and let's get in this thing okay so front door this tree died earlier unexpectedly in our yard so rather than just wasting it I love um, birch trees so I cut it up while it was dry and then brought it in here with the help of my father-in-law. Thank you. Shout out to him. So the thought is here is that is going to go in that corner and it's going to go straight up, up into here. So that's going to be a cool feature. And then right in front of it, I'm going to have a very small pellet stove. Um, it's like a 900 square feet pellet stove. So I can't wait to put that in here. That's how I'm hoping to heat this thing primarily. I purchased a mini split and the mini split has AC capabilities and heating properties. I'm going to put it right here and the woodpeckers going in that tree. <laughs> so in, in that tree. But the mini split's going to go there and it can also do heating, but for, I'm, I'm going to try and just use the pellet stove because I want a look of a, the, the aesthetics. So here, let me finish talking about that little awning outcropping here. You can see I had those 2x12s coming in. And initially, I was going to attach them to just that beam on the outside. But that put too much of a drastic pitch on that awning. I didn't like the look. So I put it underneath the beam, as you can see. And I love it. That's perfect, exactly how I want it. And on the inside, I'm going to be able to finish that and give it a nice, clean look when it's all said and done. From the top, I'm, I framed each of those sections with those top joists to the frame, to the walls. So it's very secure. I've already gone through several pretty serious windstorms. 2024 has been pretty crazy weather-wise, I think we can all agree on. But so far, I've had no casualties here, and this thing has stood the test. So as I'm going, I'm just spray foaming in those gaps before I put the full natural, or not natural, but permanent insulation in there. And then look how tall these ceilings are, guys. This is this is crazy. Um, right here, that's about let's see from that session, that's about ten feet, and then that's another five. So we're looking at about fifteen-ish, fifteen tall ceilings. So I, I love it. When you come in here, um, there's going to be a little wall here. And that's where I'm going to put like a little composting toilet back in that side. There'll be a, like a sliding barn door here. So you'll come in here and there'll be a little composting toilet. And I'm going to collect the rainwater and so that's how we can wash our hands and stuff. Over here, there's going to be an open loft. There's going to be no guardrail there because only me is going to go over to it and access it and everything. But I'm going to put my water collection tank storage here. Here, I'm going to put a Christmas tree in here, so I think I'm just going to leave that up all year round. So when you come in, you see these big ceilings, and then we'll decorate it accordingly. So that's going to be open. Over here with this loft, I am going to put a guardrail over there with a little gate here that'll swing like this, and that's how I'll get over here to work and whatever regularly. So I'm going to put a guardrail here, and then that'll be just daily use up there as well. So the open area use is going to be this main floor and then the loft there. So those are gonna be, you know, our daily use areas. From that sec that wall, I'm gonna have a rock climbing wall and I'm gonna make jungle bars going over here, over the top, and then another rock climbing wall here. I'm toying with the idea of maybe putting a net there up top so then people could like climb over on the monkey bars and then climb up into like a nest area inside the loft. But we'll see, I don't know. But back to this ground floor before we get physically up in that loft, 
look at the look at that uh, garage door. I'm so pleased with it. They did it. He did a great job installing that. I bought this thing off of Marketplace. The guy gave me a phenomenal deal to it after I told him. Did you see that bird? Oh, nature. Oh, just look at that. Oh, goodness. So the guy really helped me out, gave me a phenomenal deal on this tree house, and uh, just out of the kindness of his heart, you know. And so I, I told him what it was for, and he, he helped me out. The installer guy did a great job. He, after he saw this thing, he's like, Mike, you need to put a lift in, an opener. So he hooked me up with a great deal on this opener. It's a commercial grade opener. He gave me a great deal on it. It's Wi-Fi connected, so I'll be able to control it with my phone. I know, it's too much. Whatever. Welcome to Modern Pioneer. I do everything in excess. So we got this low clearance um, strip here, rails, and let's open it. Boom. With the opener, it does very well too. I want you guys to be able to see this thing. I love that. I love that cast iron moose panel that's right there because it lines up perfectly with the garage door as you close it and everything. It's not that heavy. I just don't want to damage it. So there you can see that. I, I love it. I just, I envision the family, all of us just sitting in here playing card games and um, just watching TV. I want to put a little projector in here. I'm going to mount a projector screen here with a drop down screen. And so we'll have movie nights in here. And I'm, I love it. I love it. So that's the garage door. Absolutely love it. Very excited with that. Over here, I'm going to put a stand up retro refrigerator with freezer that'll be here in the corner. And then this area here, I'm going to create just like a vertical ladder. So the ladder will go like this. And then there's going to be a, what is it, like a trap door or like a hatch right here. So you'll open it like that. And then that's how you'll get up into the loft. So that's my design for that. And let's get up there. I love this loft. <laughs> You just you're even higher. It's all open. I have these two bay windows that aligned perfectly and It's just awesome. So like I'm thinking when uh, I'm doing my final part walkthrough with this build I'll have like the the windows all open and I'll fly a drone through and I don't know It'll be kind of cool. I hope we'll see. I guess I need a drone so Here's where I was thinking about that little nest with the netting and everything, but I don't know, you really don't need that. So I don't know, I'm just trying to be creative. So this will be the open area, um, like a beanbag loft. I'm gonna put hard hardwood floors throughout everywhere here. And um, then we can use just rugs and stuff throughout. But you can see here up close how I attached that exterior awning porch section. I'm going to trim this so it's going to be even here and so it'll be flush across there and that'll give, give it a real a real good look so that'll be straight up undercut here and and flowing so I'm gonna have a drop down fan here so that will help circulate the air up here and below to the main floor here's gonna be where the gate is and I'll just step over there and mess with whatever I got to I want to have a train going across like the top area here and then down here. So we'll just have a, a cool train going in there. So I, I got a lot of plans, but I want to wrap up this portion of the video because it, it's been a year since I posted an update on this thing. So I really want to get it out there. And then I'm also posting videos, just trying to do all the video editing of all the other projects that I've done. We, got, we did a greenhouse this year. We did a backup generator. I made some modifications on the raised flower beds. Right now I'm working on a hot tub over there. So once I compile all the video footage and everything, I'm going to punch that media out to you guys as well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. It's been an awesome, awesome year so far. I've put this entire house up. The roof is watertight this year. So looking back on all the memories and everything, it's really great to just see good progress. And also, it's been done safely. So I can't ask for anything else. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. And I hope it also helps you in your endeavors to become a modern pioneer.
Be safe.